From the roar of the crowd to the roar of the engine, this is Pit Pass. Pit Pass is brought to you by Jake's Carts and by Buttonwood Campground. Here's your host, Ron Fox. Hello and welcome to week four of Pit Pass. Once again, Mother Nature didn't cooperate very well. Saturday was a washout just about everywhere, and I didn't make it out Sunday with the questionable weather forecast. But I did make it to Thunder Mountain Speedway on Friday. Their night started with makeup features from the previous week. So, on to the highlights. Let's start with the first makeup feature of the evening, the Steel Block Late Models. This one is easy to highlight. The 47 of Matt Gaston ran away with the win. The number one of Jake Shady ran a distant second. No one was a match for Gaston. In the Pure Stock makeup feature, Josh Fields would lead the opening laps with the 0-1 of Steve Arthurs in second. And there's a little three and four wide action behind them. The car to watch out for is the 1S of Kyle Shannon. Always a threat, he's making his way to the front. Shannon would eventually take the lead with some front runners experiencing some mechanical woes. Mike Calhoun held off Zach Gustafson for second place with Kyle Shannon hanging out with Miss Thunder Mountain, Brittany Bouch in victory lane. Ryan Kemmer led the Enduros to the green. The best racing was for the runner up spot. Chad Greeley in the white 27 would get by the eight of Corey Silvis with a lap to go. Kemmer would lead all of the laps to pick up his first win at Thunder Mountain. So, on to the night's scheduled features. In the Super Stocks, Tim Adamson in the red seven takes the early lead, but it's Rusty Martz working the cushion to move up, while the 22 of Skip Lindemuth takes to the bottom. Martz powers on by to take second. Two laps in and Martz looks for the lead. Meanwhile, Adamson loses the handle to bring out a caution. After the restart, Martz and Lindemuth have settled into the top two positions. Here's the 99 of Eric Bond. After taking third from Brandon Connor, he slips a little too high and loses two positions. Later after a restart, Bond has caught the 22 for second. He uses the outer groove to complete the pass and sets his sights on Martz. Bond could not close the gap as Martz would wheel the 16 machine into victory lane. Rusty, no surprise finding you in victory lane. You held off Lindemuth for a while and then Bond at the end. Great job. Yeah, considering this year, everyone seemed to step it up a notch and uh, we struggled there at the beginning, but I think we come back there in the feature and showed that we had something. Well, you, yeah, you've dominated here. I, I mean, I hate to use the word, but yeah, you've dominated for the most part. And uh, like I said, they're catching up to you. Yeah, um, no one relaxed over the winter, and we didn't do too much because we thought we were in good shape, but everyone stepped it up a notch, so I guess that's just opening up the tables to go a little faster and try to get a step ahead again. The top five in the super stocks were Martz, Bond, Lindemuth, Brandon Connor, and Gary Luzier. Next up, the steel block late models. A couple of laps in, we have a restart. The 96 of John Brady tries the outside wall to make a move, but he clips the 100 of Chris Clark. The white number 10 of Bruce Raybuck would lead the early laps with Rick Maxim in pursuit. No surprise here, the 47 of Matt Gaston is moving up through the pack. This pass of Jake Shady moves him to third. On a restart, Gaston looks to take the lead, but gets into the back of Raybuck. Raybuck isn't giving up as they race down the backstretch. Here, Raybuck gets a little too sideways, trying to fend off Gaston. This allows Maxim and Clark to get by as well. Clark looked very strong. Here he takes second from Maxim. In the latter stages of the race, Clark pulled even with Gaston, much to the delight of some fans. Yet that battle was short-lived as Gaston began to pull away en route to his second checkered flag of the night. Matt, this is a pretty profitable night for you, two wins. Yeah, it's uh, something that never happened before to me, and uh, it's pretty cool. But it should come as no surprise, you run very well here. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we do pretty well here. The car really seems to agree with the place. We got a good combination that works with the setup and the motor, and uh, 
and I really like I really like to race here, so uh, it works well for us. Well, you're not just strong here. You run strong elsewhere, too. You put on a good show a couple weeks ago at uh, Dog Hollow. Yeah, I, had to, I got skunked a little bit down there, but, uh, I mean, that's why you race all the laps, you know. I mean, there's a lot of good cars, a lot of good competition around the area, and um, <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it's, it's definitely tough. Uh, you got to branch out at all, maybe run a little bit outside the region or just stay locally here? Uh, with my commitments at home and uh, with work and everything, I'm pretty much committed to be here locally. Um, we do hit some bigger shows. We were thinking of Thunder Valley tomorrow night and uh, probably Central PA next weekend. Uh, we'll, probably, we'll probably hit some of those shows, uh, just mainly local though. So here you can see your top five. It's Gaston followed by Clark who held on to second. Jake Shady finished third followed by Rick Maxim and John Chesnalovich Jr. finished fifth. In the pure stocks, Steve Arthurs in the 0-1 gets a jump on the 93 of Zach Gustafson at the start of the feature. Just as Arthurs starts to power down the backstretch, he slips a little too high allowing the 93 to take the lead. Arthurs regained the lead only to hand it back to Gustafson as he spins out early in the race. On the restart, Kyle Shannon, the winner of the earlier makeup feature, is quickly gaining positions. As he enters turn three, he loses his drive shaft. No repeat for Shannon, less than a lap to go, and Steve Matko has ran down Gustafson after starting 13th. Off of turn two, Matko shoots by as it appears the 93 begins to slow. There's Steve and crew in victory lane. Gustafson limped home for second, Mike Calhoun took third, Jason Joyner and Sean Lindemuth complete the top five. And in the Enduros, it's Chad Greeley followed by Sean Hayden. Ryan Kemmer, the winner of the makeup feature, was third, followed by Rusty Murray and Steve Arthurs. Thanks to Dion Bean and the Gear family for their hospitality. When we come back, an interview with Don Gamble and much more. <laughs> 